Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make You Loco channel. And I tell ya, Ford Tech makes me loco sometimes. Uh, this 2014 Ford Explorer Police Interceptor has been driving me batty wonkers for the last few days. I tell you what. Uh, so it's a 2014 Ford Explorer Police Interceptor, recently decommissioned, has around 130,000 miles on it or so. And the customer went ahead and, and he picked it up at a Ford dealership, I believe under auction or something like that. And he probably picked it up for a song, okay? So you got a good deal on it and he'll put a little bit of money into it, fix a few known issues on there, wear items, and he'll have a good vehicle to go down the road. Oh boy, was he wrong. So the vehicle, of course, had all the usual issues with it. He has a battery going out. He has torque converter shutter. He's all these suspension noises and everything. But he has this crazy vibration in the front end here. The whole powertrain is vibrating violently when you accelerate going down the road. So he started changing CV axles on there. So the rears are new. The passenger front is new. And the lower control arm on this side is new. He changed the tie rod and, you know, stuff like that. Anything that's loose up front he found, he replaced it. Um, and then after a while of spending money and getting frustrated and no real change, I said, I'm going to bring it to uh, me and have me <laughs> deal with the insanity of it. I said, sure, I'll take it. I like the, you know, the challenge. So we just went through the shutter issue on a 2013, a relative of his, and it was the torque converter. I mean, once these vehicles start getting beat on for 130,000 miles and they get towards the end of their life, they're not changing transmissions out or torque converters. They're just going to let them ride until the very end. And then they're going to auction them off and move on to the next one. So there's a lot of issues that build up on these. So that one was a torque converter shutter. Same thing with this one. We went out for a drive. It says torque converter shutter. No big deal. So went ahead. We changed fluid. Put the, uh, the lube guard. Uh, shutter fix stuff in there. Stuff works great, by the way. I've used it on many different transmissions. Put it in there, let it work through the system. Torque converter shutter is totally gone. We can see the slip on the, on the scan tool. It's totally gone. It's great. Great stuff. So once that was out of the equation because it was so irritating and so prevalent, um, I said, let's go after the other parts of it. So it went ahead and we took for a drive after that. And, and the same thing, only upon acceleration... With the torque converter fixed, mind you, um, it was shuddering like crazy. Only upon acceleration. So let's say 30, 40 miles an hour, you want to go a little faster, you put it in the pedal into it, and the whole powertrain on here starts shaking like crazy. And once you let off at that speed, totally gone. It's totally gone. So obviously it's not wheel bearings, bent rims, tires, nothing like that, because they're still spinning at the same speed no matter if you're accelerating or not. It's something in the drivetrain. Uh, so I went ahead and I looked at it and we put a, a, a GoPro underneath there uh, with a magnetic mount and we said, what is going on? The CV axles and the engine and everything. And you got to see this video. I'll play it for you right now. Basically this powertrain, the entire big powertrain, engine, trans, it's a lot of weight. It's just shuffling. I mean, a couple inches back and forth in there violently. So that's why the whole front end is just shaking violently only when accelerating. Let's take a look. Pretty crazy, right? I mean, all that mass and up front there shifting side to side, all that weight. I mean, it just shook the whole front end of the vehicle. And the faster you went, the more violent it shook on there. I know it's hard to tell from the video, but you can tell. I reference the subframe right here, and then you see the engine moving and the trans. It's a, it's a lot of movement for the whole powertrain like that. So I said, okay, well, I know the trans mounts on these darn things. They go all the time. So up until, I believe, 14... They had this old style mini trans mount, this right here, okay? And I believe it's 15 and newer, got a totally different design trans mount. It's way beefier. It's like twice as big as this, okay? And so I knew that these always fail, and sure enough, this one was failed on there. Look at it. So what happens is this rubber right here decays. It starts dropping lower and lower and lower. And as you can see here, it even starts grinding into it. Look at that. Look at that. And this thing is trashed on here. So I sure enough went ahead and we changed that out. And then the dog bone went ahead and changed that out. That thing was squishing out too right there. And the engine mount on this side was fairly new. It still had that sticker on it still. It was, it was fairly new. It's been changed out. 
Uh, so that was good. Went ahead and changed all that stuff out on there, and no change. I mean, obviously it felt more, more solid. There's no more torque steer, which when these in trans mounts go, you hit the gas to accelerate, and it'll pull you. It'll pull the front end. There's no, that's called torque steer. No more of that. Great, we took care of that, but that vibration, that crazy vibration is still there. So then I got really frustrated. I started pulling rear drive shaft off and looking at all this stuff. I'm recording all these different angles and stuff. And then nothing would make a change, okay? And what I got stuck on was the fact the whole powertrain was being pushed back and forth like this. And it was, it was pretty, pretty violent on there. And that's a lot of weight to push back and forth. So I actually went on for one of the first times, I believe, uh, to my social media. I said, hey guys, you guys all work in the field and everything. What does this look like to you? I'm thinking it's a CV shaft. I already pulled the, the one side down here and I'm plunging it and it just doesn't feel right. It's not binding necessarily. And a lot of you out there, like you're very smart I and mean, you're very smart. You work in the field every day. And a lot of other brands have issues with CV axles. Fords generally don't. They have no clicking on turns, no nothing. Well, this is a police interceptor. Everything's out the window now. Yeah. So a lot of you said, yeah, I agree. The, the CV axle left-hand side, it probably has these these uh, low spots in it or spalling on the, on, the, on the balls inside of there and the rollers and it's getting into like, this dead spot in there and it's becoming a solid axle and it's not allowing it to move and then it transfers all of that through the powertrain. Guess what? That's what it was. Absolutely insane. So when I took it out, I pulled the whole front suspension apart initially before I even contacted anybody. I'm moving this side, the Rezepa joint, okay? Feels fine, no clicking, all that stuff. But then I start plunging this side, and I noticed it felt like there's no grease in there. So I've plunged a lot of CV shafts, just like any other technician, right? You change an axle seal, a transaxle seal, anything like that. You line up the splines on here, you get them lined up, and then you plunge it, and you pop it, and that's how you get past the circlip on here. So you get a feel for it after a while. And this one felt like there's nothing left inside of there. No grease, nothing, no stiction, no suction effect, nothing. So what I did is I said, I asked the customer, I said, what do you want me to do as far as going further? Do you have the money, blah, blah. And he's like, you know what, we got to hold off right now. I said, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and order from the Ford dealer and I'm putting it on myself. So I went ahead and put it on there with the, with the uh, axle seal, the transaxle seal, and the concern was totally gone. So I got a video, I'll show you real quick right now, of it afterwards. Same thing, 30, 40 miles an hour, you're accelerating, and nothing. Check it out. Wild, right? I mean, that one, the CV shaft, the inner joint on the CV shaft was causing all of that, shifting it side to side. Not a vibration because it's loose and worn out. It was locking up and pushing all of that movement to the, the, the powertrain on here. And they're made to move just a little bit. And it was probably maxing out the movement in the powertrain as it was binding on there. That was unbelievable. Like I said, I've diagnosed drive shafts with bound up uh, U-joints in them. You know, like F-150s and all that stuff. When they're bound up, you're driving along. When you accelerate into it, it's a whole floor shutters. And you let off and it kind of goes away. Kind of the same thing. I had one drive shaft where it was the joints were just beyond loose. And it would, it would do it on acceleration a little bit. But you let off because they were so loose, it would vibrate like crazy. Um, so it was kind of the same thing. So I knew to look in the drivetrain, but I just could not imagine. I couldn't get past all that movement causing being caused by a CV shaft on here. Okay, so real quick, let's take a look at this inner joint, this tripod joint on the CV axle that had failed. So like I said, I pulled the front axle, the front suspension apart to start inspecting things, and I noticed the Rezepa side here was fine. Everything's fine with that. And I started checking this side, and I'm plunging it, I'm plunging it, and it just felt like there's nothing there. No grease, no suction, uh, no nothing, no resistance at all. And it's a little too worn out for me, but it could it really be causing the issue? So we went ahead and we pulled off the band down here. That's why you see it leaking everywhere. And I mean, just look at this. This grease 
is like oil now. Let me bring you in a little bit closer. There we go. Look at that. And of course you can see probably there's a lot of metal in there. See it all? The metal on top of the wheel. Very cool pattern actually. All right, so I got it apart. Finally, after a couple of beatings, I mean, I know it looks like a freaking massacre just happened here. Um, you know, tripod joints, usually they come apart really easily. I mean, you just basically have it, it just slips right into here. You got your boot and your clamp. And then once you pop the clamp, pull it back, it basically just pulls off and separates on there. Uh, that's why they're so easy to separate while they're in the vehicle if you overextend the CV axle. Um, so I had to beat this one off of there. That's why you see all the beating marks on here. And you can see the grease is just like, I mean, this stuff is just, it's like, it's like oil, basically. It's not even grease anymore. Uh, it's been overheating, obviously, and it just, it's just broken down. So all these marks right here from me beating it off of there. But the actual channels where the rollers ride in, these big rollers, I didn't really feel anything on the inside here. So all that looks good to go. Um, but as far as these rollers go, so the way these work is there's three of them on here. Try, pod, joint, right? Um, and the way it works is just like this one right here. So I'll bring you in nice and close and we can look at this together. So this is the way you're supposed to work. So there's three of them on here and this, this whole piece, right? This whole roller is pressed on to this stub in the shaft here. Okay. Looks just like that. Presses onto there. And then once it's on there, I mean, it can spin, it can spin like this and it can wobble too. It can wobble all around in there. And that helps with the different angles that, the, the, uh, that the, the CV shaft goes through when you're going down the road, over bumps, stuff like that. It has to move a lot. That's why they're like this. They can spin and they can wobble. This one right here, uh, totally popped off of there when I got it out of there. And that one looks like this. So let me clean it off. I can show you what one of these rollers look like on here. So you can see the outside of the roller here. It's meant to slide on that tripod joint, right? So these little channels in here, and it goes back and forth, right? And then also spins, and then it can also wobble. So it has an outer race on here with the roller, and then it has an inner race on here, and then there's uh, probably ball bearings on the inside of here instead of needle bearings. And this part right here, the center, gets pressed onto the, the shaft, and then it can just spin on the bearings inside of there. And wobble and do anything it needs so this one's totally off but intact this one's still on that's how they're supposed to be and then this one right here was the culprit this one you can see it's still on there it's still pressed onto there and popped past this is the inner race though this is the outer race where's the rest of it yeah where's the snap ring uh where is the bearings that are inside of there well, let's say I have a needle bearing right here. Oh, there they are. Yeah, I've got needle bearings on this one. I just saw them. If I could get them. Bunch of needle bearings, see them? So the, the inner race and the outer race uh, blew apart on here. These started chewing up. And then the snap ring is wherever the snap ring's at. And it just started chewing up in there. And now, at this point, when it's going down the road, and we are loading it up, all three of these get loaded. Well, this one had play in it. See? There's no bearing. Inside there, take up the inner diameter. So it had moved to play, right? And then it would get stuck one way, and it would bind and become a solid axle. It would bind the whole axle up on there. So it couldn't plunge or go up and down or nothing like that. So that's what was causing it. Once it's a solid axle, everything that's going on on this side of it and all that stuff and up and down just goes in and out. And that's what made all that crazy. Look at that. So again, CV shafts are, are not too common to fail on, on Fords. But once you get into an extreme duty like this, severe duty vehicle like this, and all these miles, and it's original, FOMO Co., um, it's, it's going to happen.